So you finished your quilt top. Yay! Yay! But now you have all the leftover scraps to deal with. Boo! And since you still need a back for your quilt, let's make an after quilt. You'll save money, use up all your scraps, have a fun and creative exercise. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. If you're new to my channel, I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. Once you finish your quilt, you're gonna have scrap. When I was working on my first quilt, by the time I was finished making the top, I was so sick of the fabric, and then I realized I still needed to make a back. I decided I was going to use up each and every little scrap on that back, and the after quilt was bored. I ended up truly loving the process, so now I do it for almost every quilt. It saves money, I know the colors match, I also use up any leftover blocks, any mulligans, and sometimes it's even more fun than making the quilt top. Now I now know that I was not the first to think up this idea. Many people have written in that they've done wonderful creative projects this way for years, but I might be the first to call it an after quilt. So let's get going. So for the after quilt, there are only two rules. Otherwise, anything goes. The first one is it has to be flat. So make sure you're using a good ironing technique and square up often. If you haven't seen my video on a really good ironing technique, I'm going to link it in the notes below. And the second rule is, is your backing must be larger than the front. If you're long arming, it needs to be eight inches taller and eight inches wider. If you're free motion quilting, you can get away with something a little bit smaller, maybe four inches and four inches. Take a look at what you have because every scrap pile will be different as they are an echo of the quilt that you have made. I like to sort them into piles. First, width of strip fabrics, then unused or partially made blocks, triangles, small rectangles, and large rectangles. You also want to take a look at your color and fabric distribution. Do you have a lot of one and very little of another? Where will the fabrics clash? And what fabric combinations will give you the best contrast? Now we know what we have, the next thing we need to figure out is where are we going? Are we going to make a simple horizontal band using up our blocks? or perhaps a vertical one, or even a combination of both? Or are we going to use up every single scrap that we have to make a full back? Let's start with the simplest. As an example, we're going to use a quilt top 60 by 80. That means the quilt back will need to be 68 by 88 inches. If you use a length of fabric across the top of the backing, then use another length of fabric across the bottom of the backing, you will still have a band in the middle that you need to fill in. And this is the perfect place to use your scraps. Do you remember my economy block quilt? Well, this is where we put the extra blocks. If you have any half made blocks or ones that you might consider a whoops, this is where you use them up. If you have any pieces that should be made into blocks, this is where you use them up. You can set them in a line, you can set them on point. I have also made a video on scrap sampler blocks and scrap strip blocks. This is the perfect place to use them and I'll leave a link in the notes below. You can also make totally improvised blocks. Just remember to square up at some point because it needs to lie flat. So you can stop here or add a couple of strips to your band. I prefer to use my smallest pieces first and make my strips scrappy. Then I repeat with my larger scraps, using as many scraps as possible. Even if it means my big pieces of fabric fall off the edge. If you've seen my video on scrap management, you'll know that I like to take those big pieces and trim them down to two and a half inch strips for binding. So I have binding all ready for my next quilt. Even if I don't trim it down, a big piece of fabric is much more versatile than a pile of small scraps. The next way to do an after quilt is to do a vertical band on the side. In this example, it's more involved because the band is bigger. So if you're incorporating blocks, you might need more. 
If you're going to use a long strip, you need a longer piece. But you can also keep it simple and just stack strips or strips in a combination of sizes. Be careful in this method not to put small designs close to the edge because when you trim up your quilt, you will lose part of your design. It's much better to cut your length of fabric in half and move your band of scraps to the middle. And of course, you can combine these two methods together by taking a length of fabric, cutting vertically, cutting horizontally, and then moving those four pieces to the corners. This was the method I used on the back of my first UFO. So let's talk about using up all your scraps, like on this quilt back. For me, personally, I have imposed on myself one more rule. I try to avoid cutting fabric to make anything. I trim up to make things square. But other than that, I use what is shown in front of me, which means if I have half square triangle blocks, I turn them into pinwheels or diamonds or flying geese. If I have pieces that are already sewn together, I do not split them apart. I incorporate them the way they are. I use my strips. I either sew them into coin block or I use them as frames or log cabins around smaller blocks. And I build them into bigger and bigger blocks. And sometimes some really long strips. Remember, it must lie flat. I found if I use the edge of the boards in my flooring, it was easy to keep my long piece straight and identify where I needed to make adjustments to keep it lying flat. Another favorite technique is stacking. This combines blocks with the bigger pieces of fabric and you just stack them on top of each other. Since my bed is the largest flat surface in the house, I lay out my quilt top with my after quilt on top of it and that's how I gauge whether I've made something large enough. Just a few more things. I always start with the smallest pieces first and then grow it from there. Because at some point, scrap fatigue is going to set in. And if it happens, sorry, I mean when it happens, because it will happen, you'll have your biggest scraps left over. And those bigger scraps are so much easier to deal with. You don't have to stick to just scraps from your current quilt. You can bring in scraps from other quilts that you've worked on as well. Look through your orphan block pile. Can you incorporate any of those in this back? Even if they're not the same size as other blocks in this quilt, just use your strips to frame them up until they are. Contrast is key. In this quilt, this is my Victorian Albert quilt. <laughs> I had a big plan, but as I started working with the fabric, I realized that there's not enough contrast to do what I was thinking. I had to bring in an extra fabric, this Kona solid in mushroom, just to provide enough contrast that all this was worth it. And the last thing is, you don't have to make an after quilt. If you are tired and fatigued and you don't want to look at these again, don't feel the pressure that you have to make one. Put them in a bag, leave them for a little while, and then bring them out. When I finished making my husband's quilt, I couldn't stand the blue any longer. But after a two month break, I was able to get the scraps out and make this simple baby quilt. You also don't need to do a big project. You can just make an after pillow and then donate whatever scraps are left over to someone else. So when you make your after quilt, please post it online with the hashtag after quilt and tag me, just get it done quilts so I can see them. If you want to watch any of the videos that I have referenced, I'm going to link them in the notes below. I also have more stash buster videos, put that link in the notes below as well. I'll also make a playlist and I'll put it right here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at Just Get It Done Quilt. So take care and I'll see you next time.